I didn't understand you. Know. Okay. I remember these individuals during the week when you know, long enough Bible class was over. Pray during the day. Remember these people that requested prayer, the ones that they requested prayer for. But let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for allowing us to see another day. We thank you, Father, for all the many blessings that you've so richly showered upon us. We thank you, Father, for just allowing us to have the strength and the mind to come together to study another portion of your word. We yeah. know, Father, that uh, there are those who are not able to get out and, and, and go to the assembly, to come to the assembly, but we're just so thankful. We know that there are those here who have health issues, but in spite of that, they're still here. And we just thank you, Father, that they have the courage to continue to press on. And we pray, Father, for all of those who will gather here tonight. We pray that you bless each person that gathered here tonight. We just ask that you bless their home. Bless every individual in their particular home. And we pray, Father, that you will help us all to be more determined. And to do you the things that you would have to that you would have us to do than we've uh, been previously. We know oftentimes we feel to do things that we ought to do, and sometimes we do things that we shouldn't do. And we just ask you forgiveness when those uh, situations like that occur. We yeah. just thank you, Heavenly Father, for Brother and Sister Norwood who come here uh, yeah. weekly and yeah. now twice weekly to labor here. We just pray that you continue to bless them, enable them to continue to come and, and serve here. Mm -hmm. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the teachers. We will uh, be teaching the class tonight, and we pray that you bless them, help them to understand and to be able to relate to the students the things that they have studied and found to be true. Yeah. And we just ask, Father, that you uh, bless Sister Pat Simon, who requested prayer for her brother, as well as himself, and we just pray that you bless Sister uh, Simon's health. We know that you know all about her and that you're able to help her. We just ask that you would help her to have better days and just help her to overcome the difficulties that she's facing. But we pray for the success of the surgery that Victor's going to have, and we just pray that you bless the doctors and nurses and all those on their team that will be taking yeah. care of him, yeah. allow things to go well for them. Amen. We also pray for Brother Stanley Terrell. We pray that you would bless him and allow yeah. him to get good results when he visits the eye doctor tomorrow. And just pray that all will be well with him. Amen. We pray also that for the entire Terrell, he, Cal, family, and also for Sister Heath's grandson, Michael. We know the situation that they're dealing with, and we know that you're able to comfort them and help them to uh, have a faith favorable outcome to Michael and we pray that all things will be beneficial for him. Yeah. And we pray, Father, that you just uh, be with his parents and to take care of him. We pray that it all will be well with the entire family. Yeah. And we pray also to the large and poor family who's bereaved at this time. We pray that you would bless them and comfort them during this period of bereavement. Help the family to yeah. encourage one another Help them to be there for each other during this difficult time. Yeah. We also pray for Gaston Lodge as he's recovering from surgery. We pray that you would help yeah. him to continue to improve and, and eventually be back to normal. We yeah. pray that all will be well with him. And we pray, Father, for all the latest that will be going to the latest day, uh, well, the uh, convention, uh, well, whatever the, the event is called in Atlanta. We pray that you bless them, allow them to get there safely. Mm -hmm. We just pray, Father, that the, for the success of the that event. Pray for all the speakers that they would do well. And yeah. Pray, pray that this uh, event will prove fruitful for all of them. Yeah. And we pray, Father, that you will grant them uh, traveling grace, both going and coming. Yeah. We just pray, Father, that you will be with the church everywhere. Help the yeah. church to grow. We pray that you will help the church here in Henry Street to be a light in this community, yeah. help others around about us to uh, come to 
have a desire to come and see what's going on here and have a desire to listen to the message that's, that's being brought. And we just pray, Father, that upon uh, hearing your word, we pray that they too will, will see a need to render obedience unto you before it's eternally too late. Yeah. And Father, we just pray for a brother in Nigeria and the, those who are <clears throat> laboring every day to, to uh, take the gospel to the lost souls. Yeah. And we also pray, Father, for uh, those individuals in Sudan who just landlocked on an island and food is very scarce. And we know that you know all about that situation, Father. Mm -hmm. We just yeah. ask that you extend mercy to all of those people there. And we pray for a better outcome for them. And just pray that uh, a change will come so that uh, people can have normal lives there. Yeah. We just pray, Father, that you be with us as we go through the lesson tonight and pray that you would help us to understand the things that will be presented. Yeah. Uh, receiving the word, we pray that we would utilize it to help us to live better lives going forward. And we pray that you forgive us of our sins and when life here is open, a home in heaven will await us. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Go through our classes. We're not in the adult class. How's everybody today? Uh, all right. We're glad to see everybody. And as always, it's my pleasure being here to be able to serve you as your minister as well as your brother in Christ. So hopefully that your day, your week is going okay. Uh, and I know that we've been praying about some things that are challenging our life, but we have that privilege of prayer, right? Yeah. So that makes us some very, very special people in God's eyes. Remember what 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 says, The eyes of the Lord are open to what? The righteous, and his ears are open unto what? Their prayer. So it's good to have that prayer line open and available unto all of us here today. So we're going to go ahead and continue our study in the book of Romans. You know the rules of the class. Your questions, your comments, your suggestions are not only wanted, but solicited as we go forward in our studies. Of course, we are in Romans 16. And so we're in the last chapter of it, uh, so we're getting real close to wrapping this up as well. So it's been an adventure, but a good adventure as far as what we've been learning from the Word of God. So I, if I can, let's have somebody read to me. Uh, Romans 16, verse 17 to 18 is what we're going to start with today. Somebody go ahead and read, read that, please. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own daily and by smooth words and flattery speech deceive the hearts of the saints. All right. You probably should start off this class by saying, uh-oh. Because uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we're going to be given a challenge because remember how the Bible operates. It, it operates by commandment, right? Mm -hmm. It also does by what? Example. Mm -hmm. And so what the first century church is required to do, we must do as well, right? right. To be the church of the Bible, which we are, right? Because remember, we went up to the, first, the verse before that last time, right? Romans 16, verse 16. What was it? Salute one another oh, with the yeah. holy kiss, the church of the Christ. Salute, Salute you. So if we don't accept Romans 16, verse 17 and 18, how can we be the church of the Christ? Amen. We can't be. And this is an area, I'll be honest with you, that we as human beings don't want to get into. I'm not a person that looks for conflict by any form or fashion, but Satan will bring some fights to you that you didn't ask for. And he often attacks congregations, okay? And so what you're going to see is Romans 16, verse 17 and verse 18 is the potential of Satan corrupting mm -hmm. a congregation in which we want to avoid. So God tells us this ahead of time, right? So that we know the game plan and what needs to be done when it happens. Because mm -hmm. that makes sense to you so far. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Romans 16, verse 17. Now, if you didn't pick it up, it shows us that false teachers will try to 
get in the midst of a congregation. I don't care who you are. Satan will send that person there. That person will be very influential. Will be able to carry a Bible in his hand. Will be able to quote a few scriptures. But will do so out of context. Huh? Will do so with a hidden agenda with ulterior motives. Okay? So if you think that this has gone away, this was happening 2,000 years ago and it's still happening today. Okay? So that's why Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is teaching us this right now. But what does it, before I get deep into it, and don't review my notes too quickly here, but what did you pick up from this passage of Scripture? What are we supposed to do as a body of Christ when false teachers come in and sit in the midst of us? What is God saying to do? What is at least one thing? What did he say in that scripture? 17 and 18. What did he say? Okay, somebody said Mark. Right? And also he said something else. Avoid. Okay. What is the, the D word that we like to use a lot of times to say avoid? This fellowship. Correct. This fellowship. Were you telling me that somebody won't be welcome in the church at some point? Yes. Yes. Because Paul also taught the Corinthians what he said. A little leaven does what? It leaveneth the whole lump. Yeast makes the what? The whole dough rise. It don't just go to one section, right? It goes to the entire thing and corrupts the whole thing. So there's a point where that person has to be disfellowshipped. Now, was that an easy thing? No. No, because there's politics involved. Right. Anywhere you go, there's politics, right? Mm -hmm. Because that could be somebody's husband. So what happens? The wife don't like it. Right. Huh? Right. That could be somebody's child. You know, grown child, whatever the case may be. But they will come at some point. So when it comes to a church leadership standpoint, whose responsibility is it to make these corrections? It's a, it's a trick question now. Trick question. Elders, number one, are supposed to protect from false doctrine, right. but also the ministry. So all, uh, both roles are supposed to be doing the same thing, that is keeping the doctrine according to the scriptures and the scriptures only. Okay? I think I saw your hand, brother. Well, I, I guess. You read this to him. Okay. <laughs> did, I, did I wait too long? No, no, I, I just something I started to say and it came up Sunday, but I, I'm not going to make Well, what's your judgment on that? All right, so when it comes to false teachers, see, that's the thing about it. And that's why you see mega churches swell so much because they don't do any church discipline, mm -hmm. right? And remember, what do they tell you when you first come in there? Come as you are. But they never tell you, come as you are, but be willing to change. Right. right? Because what did Jesus do right after he was baptized by John the Baptist? What were the first words Jesus say to the audience? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the very crux of his ministry, to get people to reconcile with God. You can't do that without what? Repenting. So if you believe or teaching or saying things that are not of the Bible, then what you got to do? Repent. Or you can't be in the kingdom. Right? And the kingdom is another name for the what? Church. For the church. Correct. Colossians 1, 1 to 13. The church and the kingdom are the same place. Right? So to be in the kingdom, you got to repent. To stay in the kingdom, what do you got to do? Repent. No matter what the sin may be. Okay? Does that make sense? Go ahead, brother. But he 
you got synonyms, you know. That's what it is. Synonyms. Mm -hmm. uh, even when you use the word that, that means the same thing, but the word itself means the Correct. Thing. I don't know what the demographic was uh, trying to tell her or not, but you know. You know, the thing that put people to the this is a bit of thought that perhaps you better just let them come on, keep on coming. If it does something worthy of being this fellowship. So, <clears throat> I was saying, you know what? Here, just call the police and get told, tell somebody to sort it out. I'm just put you withdraw everybody, withdraw from this interview, not taking anything to do that, just isolate the city. And of course, the idea is not to punish people, but it's for people to see the error, recognize the error, and be willing to have a desire right. to change and really do, uh, come back and get in fellowship, and be reconciled. Right. But, That's uh, the point. You know, when you look at, uh, is it 1 Corinthians 5, where the man was caught in adultery right. uh, with his father's wife? You know, that, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians, that letter says, disfellowship him. 2 Corinthians says, take him back. In other words, once a person repents of what they're doing, That's right. then they can come back in, but they cannot sit there in an unrepentant state. state. Right. That's right. Because why? Think about it from this perspective. You're not just doing it to protect the congregation. You're doing it for that person's soul, too. Mm -hmm. You have to teach that person a lesson that you still got to live the life of Christ. Right. When you allow people to just do anything, you are enabling them to live a satanic life. That's it. I said it the way it is. Right. You know, I use that word satanic. Anything that's not of God is satanic. You know, you don't have to, like they see on the movies, you don't have to wear black and drink blood to be satanic. Mm -hmm. Satanic basically means just being in opposition to what God wants. So a liar is satanic. Mm -hmm. Because why? Who's his boss now? Mm -hmm. Satan. Right, he's a disciple of Satan, right? If he won't repent, he's now become a disciple of Satan. So it can be any sin that we're talking about. But this one just is particular is talking about what? People that teach false doctrine. Think about it now. Now, this is not out of the question. Because I've seen over my years in the ministry, 24 years or so, that sometimes people go off to college. They come back without the body. You get where I'm coming from with that? Yeah. Sometimes they go off and they, and they live their life in seclusion away from the church and start getting peers that mess their head up. Mm -hmm. And so then they want to come back in here right. and bring that same mentality. We love them. Ain't no, you know, see, you don't look to this fellowship anybody. I don't want anybody to take on that spirit of being a policeman for everybody. That's not what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. But when this stuff is obvious, mm -hmm. you got to be careful. Yeah. You got to be careful because why? That person that is doing what uh, they should not be doing can be the next person meant to your child. Yeah. Oh, do you catch that? Yeah. Huh? That's why it's, it's hard to really say this. I almost fought it in my spirit, but I need to say it, to be, be honest with you. That's why the shacking up issue is a huge issue, too. Because technically shacking up, living together before marriage, what really, what sin really is it, if you want to call it by, by its name? Fornication. Fornication is supposed to be withdrawn from as well. And so when you have people see, because I, I, I ran into this in my ministry before, and it caused an issue. Uh, but we had to do what we had to do. And tell a couple what they needed to do. You either got to marry or you got to get from under the same roof. And I'm not even talking about him, I'm talking about Detroit, really. For those that know, and that caused a stink. Because why? The culture is try it out. Yeah. Test drive it before you drive the car. That's the culture now. But see, it cannot become the culture of the church yeah. as well. That makes sense to you. Yeah. And so that's what you're trying to do is get that out of the church so it does not take over the church and everybody do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. 
it's not, if you've done it, it's not impossible still to try to steer somebody in the right direction. Because right. yeah. you can tell them the, right. the pitfalls right. of it because you've been through it. But you've got to open it up yeah. and not act like you haven't done anything wrong. You get where I'm coming from? Yes, sir. Because when we put our noses in the air and act like we've never done anything wrong, you can't reach anybody right. that way either. Okay. So it's, it's a way that you have to do these things. And then you have to approach people with love. Right. You know, I'm not here to beat you up about it, but it is sin. It's hard and I'm concerned of your say, soul. It's hard for people to say that they've done certain things yeah. before people. You might as well be honest. Let me tell you, the world, I had to take this out for a minute. Just oh, you can. Uh, the people outside the church is looking at us. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing you need to understand. Yeah. They're going to know every, they know what time you leave home. They know how often you go to church. <laughs> and they also you go to Bible study. Right. And if you go on a regular basis, first thing they'll say, oh, he's going to Bible study all night. You don't get it tonight. Oh, he had church, son. Huh? People right. know what That's you're right. doing. Right. They, they'll know when you come to Bible study from 7 to 9, and then 9 to <laughs> they know who's going to your back door, too. <laughs> that's, right. that's, right. that's how people are <laughs> you're not getting away with anything by far I had a brother tell me years ago here a, a young Christian brother he's like I, that's why I don't tell nobody I'm a Christian they don't know they don't know. <laughs> you ain't hide nothing from nobody you know so you know it's just, it's just hilarious the things that, that Satan does to try to get people to self justify what they're doing uh -huh. Talking about this fellowship, I, I thought about something that happened ooh, so many years ago, but for some reason it's always stuck with me. There was an incident where this man had done something at one congregation, yeah. and he came to another congregation to ask forgiveness and repentance of what he had done. Uh, I think everybody in the brotherhood knew what he had done, but uh, the minister got up and told him he couldn't accept it because he needed to go back to where he did the offense right. and apologize there. And of course, I've never seen it done with that one time, but that stuck with me because a lot of people want to come somewhere else and ask forgiveness for something they've done somewhere else. And uh, and I, I, I actually, I was a young, young baby back then and I thought, wow, you know, it made sense for right. me because those people might not even know that you asked for forgiveness. Okay. And there, and then you want to go back over there and start participating. You said, "Well, I was over there Sunday, and I they prayed for me, and I asked the Lord to forgive me." But how do they know if they were not there? That's my job. Yeah, that's the other preacher's job. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I've had those phone calls, such and such is over here, or such and such is over there, and you have to stick together as congregations to enforce the right thing. Yeah. Because really this fellowship will not work. If you can run wherever you want to run. Yeah, I know because right. uh, we used to get letters. Yeah. And brother, we used to read the letters right. from whatever congregation it came from. We might not even know who the person was or is, but he would, you know, let you know. And I rarely ever, I, I haven't seen that done in so long. It makes me think they won't do it anymore. But that used to be done a long time right. ago, often. Where? Oh, yeah. They would let the congregations know, and more let the, the ministers and all them know more in detail, not the congregation, but the ministers would know in detail. And, and I think that's the, the very reason when a person leaves and goes to another church, they need to get a letter of recommendation. Like Phoebe did. Some people don't. We studied her in Romans. But anyway, that's yeah. just not me. <laughs> Brother Jacob brought me to Rainbow <laughs> when I went through what happened in my marriage. They didn't accept me at first. They and they looked into it. Mm -hmm. And then they took me after they talked to both of us right. and found out that the other side is not going to repent from what they don't. Yeah. Then you just can't go anywhere. Right. You, people have to know. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't bother me to, for the truth to come out. Just tell the truth. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they, they did. Yeah. And yeah, so they brought me out. here to Gaston and they took me to the right most saying, now you ain't gonna stop worshiping God because of what happened in your marriage. Right. You're gonna go on. Then right. Brother Jack Evans, he's another one, mm -hmm. Brother Hook, all of them talked with me. 
That was smart. Uh -huh. yeah, but, but and what, it made me feel good because I hadn't done anything, but the people don't know. Right. But what, what would you just yeah. do, though? What, what happened in your story? Unity. Unity. That's it. Unity. Mm -hmm. Because you can go yeah. somewhere else and they would fight the unity. That's it. And then the thing is, again, if you're doing that, you're not caring about the person's soul. That's it. You care about their feelings. That's right. You care about the politics. Yeah. But what's more important? So, they sold over the all those things. You try to get that person to come to repent, right? To save. And so you when they refuse, not, there's nothing you can do. You cannot really love somebody by not doing what's true. That's right. You can't. It's absolutely impossible. impossible. Let me get these two. Then we got to move yeah. on. Let me get sister. And then I saw for the other. I can barely hear you though. I was Good No, 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 no. If they repent it, no, that's a good. That's, that's exactly what we do. As long as they repent it. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Because there, there is no forgiveness without repentance, no matter who pray. Mm -hmm. right. That's Acts 8, 22. The first John 1, 7 and verse number 12, 7 and verse number 10, because remember when Simon the sorcerer messed up, right? Yeah. He had just become a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. And so what did Peter tell him to do first? Repent. He told him, repent first. Then the what? We pray. Yeah, then pray. Prayer has to follow repentance or prayer will not get through yeah. because you're not right. He couldn't pray. They prayed for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they prayed. I, I, I think, <laughs> let, let me get that real quick, though. Oh, he, really, he been waiting a while. I was going to be an answer to what my mom said. But, um, I kind of remember, I don't know if this is the same incident or whatever, but I, I just remember that there was a, a situation that happened within the church. And, uh, you know, it wasn't here, but I remember a person getting up here and making a statement, you know. Uh, and it wasn't, I guess it wasn't the same because there was no thing that was like, well, now, you know, you need to go back. But people were accepting of it. But I guess because if something is really like widespread known, you know, you, you know, in that instance, I guess he felt like he needed to come here and, and make a statement too. Um, you know, and it, I guess depending on the timing of it, you know, um, and just how much in fellowship the other congregations are around. Probably, way, you know, you, you might need to do that. And I guess, you know, it just, some stuff is just, you know, if it's really well known, you want to make sure you let people know, hey, I'm good now, you know. I think that's a smart thing to do. Let me get you one more time. Uh, I was sort of going to clarify this probably what I got you mixed up on. I, I think maybe in me, I just understood it was a pretty severe thing that had happened. And most people knew that it had happened. But if you don't go to your brother that you did this to and get that straightened out, which I'm, uh, I'm running the impression that that didn't happen, but they came to the church and wanted the forgiveness, but he hadn't cleared it up with that person. So I, I'm sorry I didn't clarify that, because that might have been a huge factor. That's a huge difference. Um, that's, that's the reason why I said what I said. Because there is a responsibility for us in both parties to go to each other. Okay, because remember Jesus said that, you know, if your brother has fought with you before you give your offering, mm -hmm. go and reconcile with him mm -hmm. before giving your offering. I'm paraphrasing it, right? So the offend, the one that created the offense mm -hmm. should be going, right? What if he doesn't? You still got Matthew 18, 15 to 17 out there. That what? The one that, the, the, if you've been, uh, what did it say? If, if somebody has trespassed against you. you do. You also need to be going. So, in other words, it should be two people coming mm -hmm. at the same time. Either way you go, one's got to go with the other, and they got to have that conversation mm -hmm. from there because that is the Bible way of doing it, right? And we're talking about offenses now. This is talking about something different. Mm -hmm. Right. What we're talking about Romans is talking about false doctrine. False doctrine. Right. That's a different situation. What we're talking about here, 
Now we're talking about offenses as a different way of handling offenses, right? Offenses of what? Matthew 18, 15, 17. If you get offended by somebody, you're supposed to go to them and talk to them what? One on one. Right. Don't you dare get in front of the congregation. Ain't your time to get in front of the congregation. Right. Because you're causing issues that, that's at that point, right? Then if that don't work, what are you supposed to do? One or two witnesses to your conversation by y'all selves. Right. Still not in front of the church. Right. Then if that doesn't work, then it yeah. comes in front of the church. You see how yeah. Jesus keeps right. from getting messy? Because it gets messy immediately. Yeah. I've seen too much of that in my Christian life. Folks just getting up. Yeah. <laughs> Talking. <laughs> Invitation time. Mm -hmm. Talking. Yeah. Causing issues that actually not only spill into the church, but spill in the street. You know, later on, make us all look bad, yeah. too. Yeah. So, don't just yeah. get up talking. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something that it is not do scriptural it. and does not work. Right. Do not do this, because it's not in the Bible. Get up invitation time. If I have offended anybody here, I apologize. No, that ain't, that ain't in the Bible. If you've offended somebody, you go to that person, and don't you dare stand up here and say something like that. You don't do it. You don't do it. And on the other end of things, here's another mistake that I've seen happen. And I had to defend the brother. That's before I got to Henry Street. Folks, we had a, uh, and, the, and the preacher was wrong. And he know I disagreed with him. Um, we went into the preacher's office. And then we had about 10 people and one brother. They all jumped on the brother verbally. Mm -hmm. He's doing this. He's doing that. Yeah, I knew he was guilty. I know. I know he was. The first question I asked Okay, how many of you have talked to him right. about that? I said, what are y'all, what mistake are y'all doing? Because then you got ugly. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so basically, if it, a shower, if it was in a fellowship hall, you hear it all over here, you might hear in the street how bad it got. Mm -hmm. With that, because why? They didn't do it the right way. Right? And so it caused a big issue. And so I had to defend the brother that time. I said, look, y'all all wrong about this. You know, and it, I mean, it got to a yelling match. And all. I mean, it got, it got ugly. Because he didn't do it what? To right. buy a godly way. Right. Godly way. Now, again, he was guilty, but it still was the wrong way mm -hmm. of doing things. Okay? That makes sense to you? Oh, yeah. See, we don't spend the time already just talking about that. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the reason why we spend the time with that, because that's not a topic that you can just glaze over. Because if you don't get every detail on it, right. it'll be exactly what we talked about. It will be mess in the church. Yeah, and sometimes they'll call the church split. It will. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It'll cause all kinds of stuff right. that shouldn't be there because why? We did it Satan's way right. instead of God's way. Right. Okay. That makes sense to you. Yeah. But remember that though. This fellowship is not supposed to be permanent. Right. It's supposed to be until repentance Come. yeah. comes. Right? That's because right. you still think about it. You are mm -hmm. still shunning your brother. Or shunning your sister in Christ so that their behavior changes and comes back to Christ. Because even this fellowship must be done gently. Right? Galatians 6 verse 1, if your brother be caught in the fall, ye which are what? Spiritual? Who's supposed to go to them with the what purpose? To restore them to God. That's the whole point. It ain't to make them look bad. It's not to embarrass them. It's not to make you look like you're somebody great. It's about what? Restoring them gently back to the fold, to the best of human ability. Okay. All right, guys, let's move on just for a minute here. Let's go back. Go to 18 now. Let's go to this for this. It says, For well, they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So, again, what's our subject? This fellowshipping because of what? False doctrine. False doctrine. I want to come back to this, make sure we. Keep the different situations separate, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're talking about false doctrine. What is the point of people teaching false doctrine? Are you going to do turn on TV in? Yeah. Deceive. Yeah. Deceive for what reason, though? Well, he told you for, for reason. For their gain. To gain. Their own belly means what? Yeah. Their own greed. Yeah. The point of people teaching false doctrine is so they can line their pockets at the end of the day That's right. with more money, mm -hmm. right? And so why do you think 
men, men on TV can drive all the 20 cars they have. Huh? Because what are they doing? They're not preaching. What are they really doing? Psychology games. Right? They're playing with people's emotions, playing with their minds, using enough godly words to appear godly, but they're really wolves in sheep's clothing. Right. And so if Paul and them had to deal with it, why do you think we exempt from dealing with that? It's been going on for 2,000 years. This is nothing new. Satan, has, uh, Satan that sh I should say, has always put shaman in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new because why? He's trying to distract people from the truth. Right. He's trying to keep them off the path of righteousness, masquerading as people sent from God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so obviously then, they're there for their own lust. You can verify everything I said just because time getting away. Titus chapter 1, verse 10, verse number 11 says that the false teacher's motivation is what? Monetary gain. The King James Version calls it filthy lucre. Right. Say, which means what? Money. They're doing it for money because they know that if you can tap into a man's emotions, if you can, especially here's the biggest game right now, if you can get a man to believe that no matter what he wants to do is approved by God, as long as he can praise God, guess what? You're going to have a stadium of people. You're not going to have a little church building of people. You're going to have a stadium. You're going to have 30,000 people there because people want God but not God's lifestyle. Right. Oh, you don't get that, right? Yeah. See, if you notice that, places that tell the truth are small because right. very people, few people want the truth. That's right. But people want to live self-justified. They want to live without any guilt for anything that they do wrong, right? And so they're not going to talk about that kind of stuff, right? How often do you hear TV evangelists talk about repenting? No. Never. Zero to nine. No. One percent of the time. Try to slip it in and get out of there real quick. That kind of thing, because why? They know that's going to turn them off. And here's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it this. It's going to turn off their donors. <laughs> I, didn't say I didn't say worshipers, did I? Yeah. No. I didn't say church members. I said donors, because that's what they look at Adam as. Yeah. Yeah. Donors to what? They pockets, right. right? So that's why you can't get a man to change sometimes. I'm going to tell you, some of these preachers know the truth. Oh, yeah. Yes, they do, but it will cause too many issues. I can't have my 10,000 square foot house if I start going against what I've talked about before. I can't get my jet. Huh? That's right. I can't wear my Rolex if I do that. So I trade that instead of your soul salvation. Mm. What do you think you're doing? And then see, the, the thing is with human behavior, the more you tell a lie, you start believing your own lie. 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 Your lie. conscience goes away. There it is. It's, it's seared. Yeah. It goes away. You care nothing about the truth after a while. God will release you. That's what that reprobate mind is. He'll release you to what you want that is wicked and corrupt, and you can't get out of it after that. So, so Pat, I think I've seen your hand back there. I'm, I'm just because I've heard it so much, that's why I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at you. Another church, so with them not having that understanding, I think, and I'll see a problem that um, people come to church on Sunday morning with their own Sunday Bible study, but they're not getting an understanding of really what, what the Bible is trying to tell us to do and how we're supposed to be. And they were, that way, you're going to be blaming God for something that you do on your own. And the funny part about that is that. When you look at fake preachers on television, for instance, what are they really preaching? What kind of gospel are they preaching? I know it's a perverted gospel. I know it's a corrupt gospel. But really, it's a man-centered gospel. It has nothing to do with you truly honoring God by your lifestyle, right? Because what do they talk about? 99% of the time, God is going to bless you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Prosperity. Come on, y'all. Prosperity. prosperity. But what is prosperity centered in? Money. Yourself. Yeah. Yourself. So people are coming to their worship services thinking that God owed them a Cadillac after that. I heard him say that. Ain't thinking about heaven. Mm-hmm. Not thinking about it. Because they want their heaven on yeah. earth. And they want their heaven right yeah. now. Yeah, Not the way I use, They use that word blessing. Yeah. yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Sow your seed. Oh, God's yeah. going to multiply it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing that. I've been hearing that my whole life. My whole life. But that's the thing about mankind. Once somebody makes something successful, everybody copy it. Yeah. After the fact. Have you ever noticed that? When people make a, a successful car, every car starts looking like that car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing with false preaching. Whatever, uh, what do you call it? Whatever psychology works, people duplicate it in their own false ministries. As well. That's why everybody's starting to look like a cookie cutter type of thing based off of what you see on television. They ride on each other's coattails. Yeah. Yes, they are. They ride on each other's coattails because they know that's what? Popular. Right? Think about music. And don't act like y'all too holy for this. Yeah. But whatever type of music is popular, everybody has a copycat that's right. of that song, of those instruments, of that vo- vocal style. Mm-hmm. That's all you're seeing nowadays. Think about it. We, you know, in, in the United States, we became very, very popular from the 30s to the 50s. Why? Because we tell the truth, but there was something else behind that. We also use a word, we're non-denominational. People took that now and ran with it. Non-denominational today does not mean Church of Christ. Non-denominational could be anything yeah. under the sun nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? It is. It is. Yeah. And one of the your biggest things when you look when you're looking at churches, the first thing that should be a red flag to you is it something to say such such and such a church incorporated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Incorporated means business. Yeah. Right. Right. From a common sense standpoint, that means it's not spiritual to begin That's right. with. Huh? <laughs> All you gotta do is look at little details. You'll see the devil. You'll see the devil. Yes, ma'am. What gets me is that even when these big old mega churches are busted, so to speak, uh-huh. these people still don't even try to find out the truth, but they still hang in there with it. I mean, they just as brainwashed as they can get. Because I tell you, I don't understand. Yeah. You know, and I know it's because they don't study for themselves, or if they're studying, they don't understand what they are studying. Right. Or so entertained, it don't matter. Yeah, yeah, that too. It just amazes me uh, that you know it can be a big old national thing for this person, and then all of a sudden, you know, they still got that money coming in, still got that same friendship. It happens all the time. People flock to that which is wicked and corrupt. They do. It's the nature of man. He's going by what his spirit tells him to do, mm-hmm. right? If his spirit don't want to be right, he ain't, right. ain't going to do right. <laughs> it, it is what it is. Birds of a fe- feather often what? Fly yeah. together, right? So you don't see sparrow and geese fly together, do you? No. No, a geese going to fly with a geese, right? And so if it's corrupt geese, they all going to be flying sideways, right? <laughs> that's what they're doing, huh? I know that's impossible, but you get where I'm coming from here today. But I think you can see the picture, right? That if that geese flies sideways, the rest will fly with him sideways, right? Mm-hmm. That is what it is here. But let me see here. Let's make sure we might we might have covered everything we can cover tonight. This time is getting by us here. But so obviously we see verse eighteen is, is uh, Romans sixteen that it speaks to the character of false teachers, right? Right. Again, they're teaching everything contrary to the word of God to fulfill their own lusts, whatever they desire to do. Okay. All right, and so again, later we'll talk about uh, in Titus chapter 1, verse 10, verse number 11, their, their object is what? Monetary gain, right? Mm-hmm. And they're usually very good orators. Yeah. Satan, come on now. Mm-hmm. Satan know how to pick talent. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He gets the most charismatic people he can get, some of the most intelligent people he can find, but they're wicked. 
the on the outside. So you got to think about it now. Just because a man is is wicked, don't mean he ain't intelligent now. Right. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Some of the smartest people you ever gonna find is out in the streets now. Huh? They're smart. Just doing what? Devious things. Let Satan use those talents and gifts for evil means. Okay? All right? That makes sense to you? Yeah. I think we got it all. I think that's all we're going to get to. Well, no, never mind. I think, actually, I think Sister Molly was talking about it. That's why you got to know the Bible for yourself, right? Okay. Because you got to always study behind it. Acts 17, right? Like the ancient Bereans to see if the things you're being told True. are true. But I'll go beyond that. I'll say not only do you know, have to study for yourself, you got to know how to rightly interpret the Bible also mm -hmm. right. for yourself. Because if you let them cherry pick a few verses, cherry pick a few verses here and there, they'll still fool you. Yeah. Even if you read behind them, right? So you got to understand things like we talked about the other day. You got to understand dispensations. Who is God talking to in that verse? Who is that verse specifically meant to talk to? Because it may not be talking to you That's right. in this day and age. It's be there for your learning, That's right. but it's not there for your salvation. Right? right? There's nothing in, uh, from a Law of Moses standpoint, from what? Genesis to Malachi that apply to you right. today. But tithing's there. So why, so don't you think that people can cherry pick you? If you don't know your Bible and don't understand that tithing is not mentioned in the New Testament, then false preachers can easily get you out of all your money. Because what they going to ask for? Give me your tithe and your offering. Why do you think that their buildings are so big? They can double the money out of folk. It's a scheme. Because what does 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and verse number 2, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and verse number 7 tell us? We give us what? An offering. That's right. It didn't say a tithe and oh. an offering. Right? But you, you, they'll take you through the Bible and try to show you some things where they write. But you don't, you don't uh, how, to, how to counter that because you don't understand dispensations. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't understand what covenant we're under. Right. What covenant? I, I quizzed y'all on this last week. What covenant are we under? New Testament, where, where can you show that? Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. You have to keep this in mind. There are certain scriptures that you got to be able to just spout off your head. That you need to have on a daily basis. You need Matthew 28, 18, and 20. You need Mark 16, 15, and 16. We're talking about what? Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Right. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be what? Damn. Damn. You need Colossians 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us. Nailing it to his what? Cross. Right. You need Hebrews 12, 24. That Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. That ain't that many to memorize. But it shall make a difference. As to whether or not you're going to get to the truth in your understanding of the Bible. I call those bridge verses. Without those bridge verses, you're not going to get to the truth. The truth is going to be way off in the distance from you. And you'll be believing any and everything people tell you out there. Amen. Amen. You need Matthew 16, verse 18. Y'all know that. We talk about it every week, right? Yeah. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against yeah. it. You, why do you need that one? Because it is there. God has only did what? Created one it. Yeah. You can mess them up with which those, is the church. You can mess them up with those keys. You start giving other people the keys to them. They don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> if you learn all five of them, it's more than five, but it's five yes. total things if you're a member of the body. Correct. Uh -huh. but, but if you put it on. You done lost it. Yeah. Said, yeah. Where, just ask him, where, where, when did Peter mm -hmm. deliver this case? When did he have to live? I never heard. Yeah. You get this a lot of times from dominational yeah. Yeah, places. I never heard where baptism is connected with uh, salvation. Yeah. Yeah. When you ain't read 1 Peter 3.21. <laughs> 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 huh? Baptism is connected with salvation. Baptism does not save us. Yeah. D-O-T-H in the King James Version means does. Right. 
Right. Baptism does not save us, not to put away the filth of the flesh, right. but the answer of a good conscience right. toward God. You ain't got to be a preacher to do what I'm doing. Right. You just got to make sure you commit that to your heart. And if you're getting older like I am, write it down. <laughs> Take it with you. All of these types of things. Because first and foremost, it's going to protect you. And second, you'll be able to share it with other folk. See, when people start talking about, oh, you can worship anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. That's what Matthew 16, verse 18 comes out for you. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build what? My, My church, and the gates of hell shall what? Yeah. Prevail against it. God is a spirit, John 4, verse 24. And they that worship him must worship him how? In yeah. spirit yeah. and in truth. Yeah. All right, so you telling me that everybody out there is worshiping in the truth? Everybody has a true doctrine? Then why are everybody different? Because truth is not relative. Truth is only truth. truth yeah. It's not truth compared to everybody else. You can't do it that way, right? So you have to know these things yeah. for yourself. I'm sorry I went off on that tangent. I'm trying to equip you. I'm trying to help you. I've had so many people attack me about, you know, the Church of Christ, so forth and so on. If it, it was, I, I, can I can I be honest? Can I say be honest? Yeah. yeah. Even before I was a preacher, back when I was studying in, 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 in uh, Tennessee, when I lived there back then, and before I was a preacher, I knew enough of a Bible, of the Bible, not to become a Muslim. I was studying the Quran. Mm -hmm. Why do you think I know something about it? But when I was reading this thing, I'm like, that don't sound right. <laughs> that can't be right. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But if I didn't know no Bible, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, I would yeah. be saying to you right now, Salam Alaikum. Yeah. Alaikum <laughs> Salam. I'll be saying all that stuff right there to you now. Now, I did give up pork, but it wasn't because of that. <laughs> I just did it because a girl told me to. Amen, y'all. That's why I was married. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Came back home. I was in college then. Yeah. Came back home for the summer. And my parents were like, well, you're not eating nothing because we eat pork <laughs> in this house. <laughs> so I went back to eat pork. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have starved right, right. to death. But any qu last question or comments, y'all. I'm about to run over time, so I don't want to do that to you. Any, any questions or comments? We're going to stop here. Uh, I know it's not that many verses we cover, but that's how rich the Word of God is. That's how much information is there in just a few verses that we need to, need to digest there. Any other questions or comments? Feel free. Right. Let's do what we normally do. Let's get a brother to lead us in a, in a verse or two of a song, and that way we can reconvene at this appropriate moment. But good class, and, and appreciate everybody, and you have a good night if I'm going to speak to you before we leave. God bless you. No, seven, no, seven and two. I'm present on the earth in new life and and every day dear friend in earth thou art Lord let my feet on higher ground Lord lift me up and let me sing
join us as we continue on and sounds like they having a good Bible class over there too right yeah. anytime you go along <laughs> that means something good is being taught in the process there so as always I thank you for being a wonderful audience to not myself but the word of almighty God and I also thank you for being a good team of workers as we go forward as one unit in trying to make sure the Gatson knows the truth and everybody we encounter knows the truth, and we stay on the same path uh, as well, so that salvation is for, uh, it's given unto us, I should say, at the end of time. Now, aren't we all uh, going for those words, well done, thou good and faithful yes. servant? Yes, sir. Absolutely. you got to have that goal, or we're in trouble, right? Yes. Otherwise. But we're just going to stop, as we typically do, and we're going to... Extend the Lord's invitation as well as go through announcements. Let me quickly first uh, remember the plan of salvation. If you have not obeyed it, please don't let another day go past you here. Uh, time is just going by too quickly, too fast. And we really don't know how much time we have left yes. on this earth. Things can change in a day. Things can change in five minutes. You know, I'll be transparent with you again because I don't hide nothing from you. You know, I had some some news as far as my last doctor's report saying, "Man, you got to start eating right. <laughs> you got to start exercising, or you gonna be in trouble." And that was just last week, Amen, y'all. And so I already know I'm not that old of a man, but God can take me tomorrow. And I'm already getting some things saying you need to get together, Amen, y'all. If you want to stay here, that's how it is. And I just changed in a week's time. And so I want to put that on your heart, you know, as well, knowing that tomorrow may not come for any of us. And please drop any pride that you may have. We cannot take pride for the judgment day. Amen, y'all. When you think about the tools that Satan uses, what is the three tools he normally uses? The lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the what? Pride of life. That pride is, I've always been that way, I ain't changing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That comes from Satan. Don't let him block you from salvation anymore. Don't let him stop you from worshiping the spirit and the truth. Amen, y'all. Yeah. So many people got that zeal. Huh? But it's not according to what? Knowledge. The Bible says. Amen, y'all. Amen. Now, go ever see me. I don't care where it come from. Ever knock anybody got a zeal for God. Thank God you got that zeal. But you also need knowledge. You yeah. also need faith. You also need obedience to be saved. And I'm not going to hold that back for you. I'm going to tell you that because I love you. Amen, y'all. I'm just mm -hmm. telling the truth here. With that being said, the plan of salvation, which I believe everybody knows here, but I'm not. so I'm not going to take a whole lot of time, but you can help me out with it. Where do we normally start? Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. And hearing my what? The word of God. The word of God. <clears throat> How to respond to the word of God. What is that word of God? John 3 verse 16 is a quick summary of it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have Amen. everlasting life. How else do you respond to that word? Not only you got to believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, meaning the son of God, but you also have to respond in your lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. That's what repentance is all about. According to Acts 2 verse 38, yeah. repentance means what? Turn to God in the way that you behave. And leave a sinful lifestyle alone. The uh, four part of the plan of salvation is what you must say. Say. That's also a response to the word, right? Because what else does the word of God say? Matthew 10 32. Jesus said, If you confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father, which is in heaven, right? So we got to confess him so that he confesses us, right? That's another way of saying we take ownership with him verbally. He's going to take ownership with us as well, right? Because what do you want to be called in Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46? You want to be called one of God's sheep, 
right and be on the right hand of God on that judgment day so that heaven could be your home. You got to be able to tell the world, not be ashamed that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, meaning what? You're confessing he's the son of God. Then we must go down in the watery grave of baptism. You know, I normally volunteer my money when it comes to the to baptism because I know some folk don't like getting their hair wet. So I say, I usually get you a hairdo if it come down to that. <laughs> but I'm going to volunteer Mitchell money. I'm going to volunteer <laughs> Brother Mitchell's money. If it come down to it and your hair get messed up, actually, we got a beautician here. I might volunteer her. It's just a pet. <laughs> I'll put y'all all on the spot. That's all right. We work together. Is that all right, y'all? See, maybe I should do that every week. Just volunteer somebody for the hairdo. And whoever get it, that's just on you. Amen. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't get me yet on that one. Yeah. But anyway, that's just silly humor to say that for a very serious thing. That God commands baptism. And if Jesus is really your Lord and Savior, do exactly what he says without question. Don't let the birds in your ear. That's a symbolism for Satan in the parable of the season of the sower. To keep you from coming to Christ and do what he says. Because he said, not I said, he said in Mark 16, verse number 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Don't ever let no preacher tell you that baptism is symbolism for you already being saved. No, it does not work that way. Because he said what? It has to come first before salvation comes. Go in order of the words. He said, believe and baptize. Then what happens? Salvation. As the old saying goes, you can't put the cart before the horse. The, the, the has to be aligned correctly. Believe in baptism, then what? Salvation. Because then if you know they're teaching you that, they are not of God. Amen. Amen. And if they are not of God, how are how they going to tell you how to be with God when they're not with them themselves. Right. Amen. Amen. The Bible say the devils believe now. Oh, yeah. And, and, they, and they tremble in the process. So belief ain't enough now. You got to respond. You got to respond the right way. So again, quick summary. Uh, Brother, Brother uh, Large has talked about it earlier. Five keys. To becoming a Christian. What, what is it? Hearing the word, believing it concerning Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Son of God, yeah. repenting of your sin, confessing yeah. Christ, being baptized for forgiveness of your sin, and salvation of your soul. One more key that's talking about your lifestyle after the fact. Yeah. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10 says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee what? Wow. A crown of life. And we all know what faithfulness is. Faithfulness is beyond just believing. See, if I'm faithful to my wife, I come home to her. Right. That mean, that's part of what? Behavior. See, I can always believe I'm her husband and live across town. Go ahead. You preach man, right? <laughs> Am I her husband? No. If I just believe I'm her husband. No, no, no. And I don't provide for her. Yes, no. Huh? No. I don't live with her. I don't kiss her and say, have a good day, honey. I don't pray with her. I'm not doing the things of a husband. That's right. That's right. So how am I faithful to her? Right. Mm -mm. Faithfulness requires what? What you believe and what you do to truly be faithful. I'm going to stop there, y'all. But if you're proud of God and you have done something disorderly, you have to understand that you can get it right with God by the grace of God. And that's in Acts 8, verse 22, and 1 John 1, 7, verse number 10. That you must repent of your sin, confess your fault to God, and ask to forgive you. And he's going to forgive you as a Christian has gone wrong as well. So we reserve this time not to embarrass anybody, but we, re we reserve this time to encourage you, to support you. If you need to become a Christian the right way, I'm here to take your confession, and we'll go down and baptize you right now. There's no waiting on that kind of thing. Because remember, what did we talk about? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. That when you leave here, you have to have a what? Clean conscience. Don't come out of this assembly fighting in your mind. I should have done this. I should have done that. This, you know, you don't have a clean conscience. That's still a dirty conscience. Because you didn't do what you know you should have done. 
But you can leave here taking a sigh of relief. Huh? I love Angela Bassett, but we don't need her to wait to exhale. Amen, y'all. You excel, exhale, when you come out of the watery grave of baptism. That's when your mind relaxes because you have done what God has told you to do. Right, let me stop, y'all. I'm going to keep being silly if I keep doing that, y'all. Let, let me keep going. So with that being said, do we have anybody that wants to give their confession and be baptized tonight for the forgiveness of your sin and salvation of your soul? Do we have anybody that wants to be restored? Let it be known as we pause just for a moment to give you that opportunity to do so. Okay, seeing none, then we'll go ahead and we'll stand and we'll ask, uh, we'll ask Brother Desmond, you mind giving us a closing prayer? That is appropriate time. Wait, hold on, I did forget something. Hold on. I forgot announcements real quick with you. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to get y'all some exercise. We're going to do that a few more times. We do. I got to exercise according to the doctor, so y'all got to do it with me. No, I'm kidding. But don't forget, uh, I did forget this really quickly here. Uh, remember May 13th, 9, 9 to 2 a.m. is Dorcas Day. We had our announcement last week. Uh, does, anything else in regards to that or any other announcements also? Uh, if there's anything else, we'll probably get you on Sunday. Of course, we're going to get y'all to get in coordination for different things. And this should be a real good day if we have all the participation because we got, uh, they're going to give us three shots, yeah. uh, two shots, the full total shot. It's going to be free food. The church going to have to pay for it. Yeah. We're going to have free drinks. They don't have to pay for that. We got signs being made. So strides are being made to make this a real good day. And just need all the help people making sure they put their clothes and I'm buying two folders. Anybody want those things to fold the clothes in? Because I am not going to stand in for clothes like that. I, 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 I got because I'm not going to do it. I got it. And um, I can you. I'm running to the church. Amen. And you got pants and shirts and things. And, and the reason I want them because I want them to be neat. Yeah. And if you have this thing, you fold the thing to me. I should have Alright, any other announcements? I'm make sure we don't miss anybody or prayer requests too, because Brother Desmond is standing on by for that. Now you can stand up, and I'm not going to tell you to sit down again. So somebody get lead us in a closing verse and then we'll pray, please. God bless you again. Good class.